Hey guys, welcome to Hip Hughes History. Let's do it right now. Some government vocabulary. Veto. I'm in your pocket, dude. V veto. 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 How about that? Let's get him out of the park. Here we go. That's for learning. All right, in Article 1, Section 7, Clause 2 of the United States Constitution, um, we bring to life kind of the concept that Madison laid out in Fed 47, which is that the president or the executive branch would have some type of partial agency role in the legislative process. And most of us understand that quite simply by the president being able to sign a bill, veto a bill, and then that bill, if it's vetoed, going back to the house that it originated from, where it would need a two-thirds majority in that house and the other house in order to override that veto and become law. So in Article 1, Section 7, Clause 2, there's a little phrase that talks about what happens after a bill gets passed by both houses of Congress. If any bill shall not be returned by the president within 10 days, Sundays excluded, after it shall have been presented to him, the same shall be a law, in like manner as if he had signed it, unless the Congress, by their adjournment, prevent its return, in which case it shall not be a law. So what does all that mumbo-jumbo mean? Basically, it says that once that bill comes to the president's desk, the president has four options. A, they can sign it. They can make a big show of it. They can invite the TV cameras and get babies and kiss them and get a big magic bed and sign it. Everybody claps. And that's kind of, you know, number one, what they could do. Number two, they can obviously send it back to the house that it came out of. Whether it started in the Senate or it was the House of Reps, it can go back there marked with a veto, usually with some type of explanation as to why the president's vetoing that piece of legislation. But then, if that house and then the other house can get a two-thirds majority vote, which is a super majority because it's so big, they can override the president's veto, right? So we're going back and forth in checks and balances. The third choice is to do nothing. The president maybe doesn't want to make a big show of it. Maybe they support it, but they don't want to alienate their base or some type of demographic group. So they just chill like a villain, man, right? Watch some football, play some pool, read a comic book. And then after 10 days, Sunday's excluded, the bill uh, just becomes law magically. Like Jack and the Beanstalk, it grows into a law. And then the fourth option goes to the end of that passage, and this is the pocket veto. The president, if Congress adjourns itself and does nothing, if the president puts the bill in their pocket and forgets about it, after 10 days, if Congress is gone, if they've gone on adjournment, they've gone on recess, they're not in town, then the bill is dead. And then in order to revive that, when Congress comes back into the session, they'd have to go through the whole Kit Kat and Caboodle show again, passing it in the House and Senate. And basically, that's almost you know, impossible to do. So a pocket veto, and this has been challenged. In 1929, Calvin Coolidge, it was challenged, and the Supreme Court backed basically any kind of pocket veto. So even if Congress left just for a couple days, they know what they're doing. If it's, you know, the calendar and the 10 days is up and they're not in town and the president doesn't do anything, they should have known better. In more recent times, Congress has been able to kind of designate an agent. And therefore, if they're out of town and the president wants to veto it, they can contact Congress, Congress can come back in town, and then they would be able to override that veto. Um, in more recent times, the Supreme Court has kind of given it like a three-day gig. So if you're out for a couple days on recess, the president can't use a pocket veto. But anything after three days, basically the president, if they want to use the pocket veto and, you know, let that bill die in their pocket as Congress has adjourned itself, Congress should have known better. What are you doing? Why are you leaving town? We got a bill in the president's pocket. So that's a pocket veto. Maybe one example, especially if you're taking a test out there, you're in AP government or something like that. I always kind of think in my head of Lincoln and the Wade Davis bill. This goes to radical reconstruction and Lincoln kind of being a little bit softer on reconstruction. Go look at another video. But basically, Lincoln doesn't want to sign the bill, but he also doesn't want to alienate the Republican Party. It's his party. The radicals are in his party. He doesn't agree with them all the time. So instead of vetoing the bill, he waits to the radicals adjourn Congress and go home, and then he does nothing. And they were pissed! So there you go, guys. That's what a pocket veto is. Hopefully you learned something. Stick that in your pocket. How about that? All right, guys, I got to go right now. Make sure you check out other videos on Hip Views and you subscribe and you check the description below for all kinds of EDU channels. It's just amazing. Your brain's going to burst and blow up and come back together and grow learning. 
All right, guys, there we go. Where attention goes, energy flows. I'm out.